Hi everyone, Phil from Tefa Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this NVMe based SSD from Lexar. It's the NM620 and it's got read speeds up to 3300 megabytes per second. And we've got links in the description just below if you're interested in purchasing. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well. And that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, let's go over the box and some of the basic specifications. So we've got the Lexar NM620, it's an M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 3 times 4 NVMe SSD. If that wasn't a mouthful, well, there's plenty of other numbers and stuff on the box. As you can see, you can see what the SSD looks like there. I have a feeling there's actually going to be a sticker over that bit, but we'll have a look when we open the box. Tells you it's 3,300 megabytes per second on the read. It doesn't mention anywhere on the box, or not that I can see of, unless the writing is that small, what the write speed is. Luckily, I've got a thing called the internet, and that tells me that the write speeds are slightly different per model, which is actually quite common with SSDs, but it would be nice to mention that on the box with the different speeds depending on the size. So if you've got a 256 gigabyte version of the drive, the write speeds are 1,300 megabytes, the 512 gigabyte version is 2,400, the one terabyte and the two terabyte version both go up to 3,000 megabytes per second. And a couple of other numbers you may want to know is also the total uh, bytes written. If you go for the 126 gigabytes, it is 125 terabytes. The 512 gigabyte version is 250 terabyte. The one terabyte version has a T BW of 500 terabytes and the two terabyte version has 1000 terabytes just so you know there are other inf uh, bits of information in the description be below if you're interested but let's have a look at the rest of the box so on the back of the box you can see here it shows you some more specifications again it looks like from the way they've done the box is it's the same box they use for every single side they uh, for every single size all they do is change the sticker on the top but i would like to see the actual write speed because actually the write speed is pretty good for, especially for the larger drives it'd be something to actually shout about when you don't include a write speed it puts me off and other people off because people don't always know what it's going to be and generally if you don't include it it means it's going to be bad if it's good hey shout about it obviously you're not so it would be nice to include that on the back of the box and just put down in small writing in the bottom corner 256 gig version read speed write speed is this that and the other and so forth okay so this is what you've got in the box first of all you've got the plastic packaging which well you're probably not going to need uh, after you've got the ssd out of the box You've got the SSD, we'll look at closer in a few seconds. You've got a manual, personally I would have preferred to see a QR code, that way you could get the latest information with all your different languages on their website while just scanning the QR code. Saves paper, saves environment. It also comes with a screw, so if you ever need a good screw, you've got one here. It also, um, a lot of SSDs don't come with these screws, which can be a bit of a pain because you may have lost the one what comes with your motherboard, so it's always good to have an extra screw. So we've got that there, it does come in a plastic bag as well. You've got the drive itself, as you can see it has got a sticker on the front which it doesn't show you that on the box. I had a feeling it would. Um, I'm not sure if it uh, says anything about warranty void if you've removed it. I don't see any information about that. So obviously if you are wanting to use it with uh, a heat sink or something just be cautious. Some manufacturers do state don't remove them. I don't see any warnings on there but I'm not saying it doesn't have it hidden somewhere in a manual. On the back itself it's just plain not much to see. Personally, I prefer those stickers on the back. Last thing I want to do when I look in my computer case is see some 
barcodes and recycle marks and all this that and the other on the actual SSD inside my machine. So if any advice I'd give, I'd say get rid of that sticker off of there. Um, but otherwise, it looks pretty standard. I'm going to peel the sticker off in a second just so you can actually see the chips on there and that way you'll know exactly who makes what. But otherwise, it's an SSD and we're going to give it a few tests in a few seconds just to see if it performs as good as it should. So down to testing. The full description of the machine we have used is in the description, so if you want to read more about that, feel free. But in basics, it's a 9700KF processor, 16GB of memory, GeForce 1060 graphics card. All tests are done using the same machine. We even use exactly the same port on the machine to do all the tests. On top of that, the machine is not connected to the internet, so there is no different variations in the software. So the software is exactly the same version for all the tests. Uh, there's no Windows updates installed, there's no additional software installed on that specific uh, machine. So for the testing machine, everything is identical for every single test we do. Okay, so down to testing. First of all, we tested Crystal Disk Mark on the read speed. You can see the Lexar results at the bottom of the chart. We've got 3,376 megabits per second. It was just behind the Samsung 970 Pro, but it beat out all of us on the graph, including the NM610 by Lexar as well, so it's definitely a lot faster than the 610. On um, the actual write speed, it actually came out the actual winner. Again, this is a one terabyte version for um, comparing to some other different sizes, but it got nearly 3,000 megabytes per second compared to the Samsung, which got close to 2,200, and the other Lexar just got a little bit faster than the Samsung. So reads a little bit down from the Samsung, but the write's definitely a lot higher. And this is basically the same tests using Atto this time. So the read speed we got 3,150 just behind the Samsung, but a lot faster than, for example, than the Corsa and the Elva Lexar drive we tested a while back. And this time we do Atto tests on writing. And as you can see here, the Samsung got 250 megabytes per second, where the Lexar got 2810 it's nearly a third faster so that's pretty good and definitely a lot faster than the nm610 it's basically double the speed obviously depends on price what you can get hold of them for but if you've got the extra pennies and you can get it good for a good price the nm610 or should i say the nm620 looks like an attractive price temperature wise we found the nm620 uh, running at 43 degrees on average for our testing, which is pretty good, which was a lot cooler than the Samsung, and even actually cooler than the Lexar NM610. So overall, we've got a very fast drive, especially on the write speeds. It's something they should be shouting on the boxes that they're... They do up to 3,000 on the right. A lot of manufacturers say they can get that high, but they don't actually get that high. Where in this case, they do. So they really need to shout out about that. So it's a very fast drive. Ideal for using for an operating system or if you want fast storage. Let's just say you do something like we do, like Premiere Pro. Having a storage drive where you're editing material on something of that speed is a real bonus. It speeds things up, makes things a lot smoother, a lot better. It's a brilliant drive. So you can use these in, obviously, laptops, PCs, whatever you really want to. And again, the NM620 is brilliant speeds. Again, depends on what price you can get hold of it for. Uh, but even the saying that, the NM610, the older model, which is roughly half the speeds in some cases... Um, but it's still a good price if you can get hold of it, and it still gives you a lot better performance than a traditional SATA-based SSD, and it's, well, no comparison against a hard drive, let's put it that way. So if you're still using hard drives, you really think, need to start looking at using SSDs, especially if you're using um, storage, what needs to be used a lot, needs to be fast. SSD is the way to go, so I highly recommend this product. Thank you for watching this video everyone, it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, 
comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.